Moving on to the UK now, Sue Gray's report into the alleged lockdown busting parties in Downing Street has now been released, finding that there were failings of leadership and judgment by Downing Street. Sue Gray's 12-page update on the Downing Street gatherings has now been published. This investigation, the inquiry into the party gate scandal was uh, much awaited. The Prime Minister earlier in the evening, remember, received the Sue Gray report on the party gate scandal. The Prime Minister is expected to deliver a statement and make a statement to the House of Commons after receiving the results of this uh, investigation into allegations of these parties that were held flouting the COVID-19 protocol and norms. These parties allegedly were held at different points in time where the UK was witnessing various degrees of lockdown restrictions, with some of them also restricting people from entering, from exiting their homes, from leaving their homes as a result of the COVID-19 concerns. Sue Gray has been investigating a number of these allegations of these parties being held at Boris Johnson's office and in other government departments. These parties allegedly were held when such gatherings were banned as a part of the COVID-19 restrictions in the country to tackle the spread of COVID-19. The report has been released. It was handed over to the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson earlier in the evening. I remember Boris Johnson had claimed, he had promised that he will make the findings public as soon as he receives the report and is expected to deliver a statement. And the most serious allegations against uh, Boris Johnson uh, may not be addressed in this first version of the report, but at the same time, as per the initial details that have surfaced, the initial findings of the report say there were failures of leadership and judgment at Downing Street. That's the initial finding. The report says, and I'm quoting, against the backdrop of the pandemic, when the government was asking citizens to accept far-reaching restrictions on their lives, some of the behavior surrounding these gatherings is difficult to justify. And that there were failures of leadership and judgment at Downing Street. These are just the initial findings. The conclusion also saying that some of the gatherings should never have taken place. A number of these gatherings, the report says, should not have been allowed to take place or to develop in the way that they did. Remember, we're talking about alleged lockdown parties, parties that were held allegedly flouting COVID-19 norms in the UK by the government itself. These gatherings were taking place allegedly at a time when these restrictions against the spread of COVID-19 were in effect. The Partygate scandal has come at a time when Boris Johnson has already been facing a number of controversies and scandals. Uh, he has promised to deliver a statement as soon as uh, the report is made public. He did receive the report earlier in the evening. The Sugri investigation into the Partygate scandal was submitted at 10 Downing Street earlier in the evening, post which the UK Prime Minister is expected to deliver a statement. As of now, what we do know is that the initial findings say there were failures of leadership and judgment at Downing Street. The conclusion also says that some of the gatherings should never have taken place. A number of these gatherings, as per the report, should not have been allowed to take place or to develop in the way that they did. There is significant learning to be drawn from these events, which must be addressed immediately. This does not need to wait for the police investigations to be concluded. That's a very significant point that is emerging as a part of that report, which has been submitted uh, to the UK Prime Minister over the party gate controversy. Uh, these uh, party gate revelations, as they are called, forced the Prime Minister of the UK to order an internal inquiry. Senior civil servant Sue Gray was asked to look into the claims. But the involvement of the police last week uh, it was said earlier, could prevent full details from emerging. As of now, the findings, the initial findings have uh, been released, saying that there were failures of leadership and judgment at Downing Street. 
The Prime Minister is expected to de deliver a statement post the submission of that report in just a short while. This scandal has prompted widespread public and political anger about the breaking of the lockdown rules by the government itself. The delay of that report also gave the embattled Prime Minister some breathing space. Uh, he had promised to address the Parliament as soon as the report was published. Now that it has, uh, we are expecting him to deliver a statement. Over the last few weeks, all eyes have been on Sue Gray, a British civil servant who is currently the second permanent secretary in the Cabinet Office. So far, uh, reports of several lockdown parties have emerged. Some have been held allegedly at Downing Street itself. Others have been held in different government offices as per the reports, uh, like the Treasury and the Education Department. All of this while COVID-19 cases were on the rise and Britain was under several degrees of lockdown measures. Let's take you through some of the key findings that have emerged as of now. The Sue Gray report says that too much responsibility and expectation is placed on the senior official whose principal function is the direct support of the Prime Minister. And this should be addressed as a matter of priority. That is just one takeaway to summarize what the report says. It concludes that some of the gatherings should never have taken place. They should not have been allowed to take place or to develop in the way that they did. And there is significant learning to be drawn from these events, which must be addressed immediately by the government. And this does not need to wait for the police investigations to be concluded. Remember earlier, uh, it had been said that because of the pending police investigation, some of the um, findings could, uh, the involvement of the police could prevent full details from emerging. And a very significant takeaway at this point coming in from the Sue Gray investigation is that these findings do not need to wait for the police investigation to be concluded and that the addressing of this significant learning to be drawn from these events should not wait for the police investigations to be concluded. Let's elaborate on uh, the allegations and the findings uh, now against the backdrop of the pandemic when the government was asking the citizens to accept far-reaching restrictions to tackle the spread of COVID-19. That is the period when these gatherings allegedly took place and the investigation into these gatherings, the report has now been released. Maximilian Hess, fellow at the Foreign Policy Research Institute, is now joining us over the phone line from London. Uh, explain to us what we know as of now, as far as this uh, report is concerned, and the implications of the same. Hi, uh, thank you so much for having me. Well, this report has certainly uh, been quite eagerly awaited across the UK political environment. But that has changed significantly in recent days with the revelation that the Metropolitan Police, the police service here in London, will be investigating as well, which has uh, led to certain redactions from this report that will leave some government supporters and government critics uh, disappointed. However, the headline for now is that the report certainly is quite critical and revealed even more uh, gatherings than have been covered in the press. So there was impetus is certainly on Boris Johnson to try to respond and explain those. Right. Uh, it was said that the involvement of the police last week could prevent full details from emerging. And now, as per the initial findings of the report, um, it says that there is significant learning to be drawn from these events, which must be addressed by the government. And this does not need to wait for the police investigations to be concluded. That's a very significant takeaway from that report. Yes, certainly. The, um, however, that had already been broadly admitted even by the government uh, in the uh, case leading up to the report. Uh, Boris Johnson had apologized and said that they would overhaul po uh, policies and oversight uh, in Number 10 Downing Street, the Prime Minister's office. The lack of detail, however, may uh, limit some of the potential political fodder However, I certainly think it's likely that on the back of exactly that account and that summary you just gave, 
we will see quite a few more uh, no confidence letters in the prime minister come from other conservative MPs. What do you make of the report saying that in the backdrop of the pandemic, when the government was asking citizens to accept far-reaching restrictions, some of the behavior surrounding these gatherings is difficult to justify? Certainly, it's a very uh, critical and quite a stark line. Uh, however, the government is relying on technicalities, including around the ministerial code that Boris Johnson will certainly use to argue means that despite these criticisms that it's not, not a resigning matter. His opposition, both within his party and uh, from the opposition benches, the Labour, Liberal Democratic parties and SNP, have made quite clear for some time now that they do see this as a resigning matter. I think that one upside Boris Johnson has been hoping for was that this report would essentially mean there were no further revelations to come. However, with the Metropolitan Police investigation, that threat remains. So this is certainly not the last we've heard of this news story, even if Boris Johnson is able to defend himself effectively in the coming hours, Dave. Right. What options does he have, according to you? Well, uh, he, he certainly has already moved to try to build up support within his own party. Uh, today they launched the benefits of uh, Brexit statement. They're also due to launch their guidelines for the leveling up agenda. So essentially he's looking to convince his own allies within his party that he remains uh, the right man to lead on policy matters. However, at the same time, he's gone forward with a tax increase that's controversial amongst his own party. So uh, his his best efforts there may not be enough. Right, stay with me, Maximilian. Just a quick roundup of the key takeaways from the Sugri investigation that we are currently tracking. This long-awaited report on the alleged lockdown parties at the British Prime Minister's residence has now been finally released to, for our viewers who might just be tuning in. The key takeaway uh, being that the initial findings say there were failures of leadership and judgment at Downing Street. The report further says, against the backdrop of the pandemic, when the government was asking citizens to accept far-reaching restrictions on their lives, some of the behavior surrounding these gatherings is difficult to justify. The conclusion essentially says some of the gatherings should never have taken place. It says the number of, a number of these gatherings should not have been allowed to take place or to develop in the way that they did. There is significant learning to be drawn from these events which must be addressed immediately by the government. And this does not need to wait for the police investigation to be concluded. Remember, earlier it was said that the involvement of the police last week will prevent full details from emerging as far as this investigation is concerned. This uh, probe was launched. It was uh, held by senior civil servant Sue Gray who was asked to look into the claims of these lockdown parties that were organized at a time when there were several degrees of restrictions that were in effect in the UK. The party kit scandal prompted a widespread public and political anger over the flouting of these lockdown norms uh, by the government, by the Prime Minister. Uh, the delay of uh, this report being submitted also, in a way, uh, gave uh, the UK Prime Minister some uh, breathing space. Uh, he has now promised to address the Parliament as soon as the report is published. Over the last few weeks, all eyes have been on Sue Gray, a British civil servant who is uh, currently second permanent secretary in the cabinet office and has been described by colleagues as the person who runs the UK, as for some reports. Maximilian, uh, for our viewers who might uh, be uninitiated, explain to us the significance of the Partygate scandal and the implications that it has had for UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson so far. Certainly. The, you know, the real takeaway from the scandal has been a, a very strong undermining of this feeling that there is one rule for the government and Boris Johnson and his friends and allies and another rule for the broader population. This has been accompanied by a dramatic reversal in fortunes and public opinion polling where Boris Johnson had led the Tories to quite a sustained lead uh, throughout the pandemic to now over the last three and a half uh, months a dramatic reversal with the Labour Party taking over. So there are a number of Conservative MPs who are concerned about their own political futures and Boris Johnson's ability to really push through the agenda uh, amid these headlines and these scandals. We saw for the first time in almost 15 years a Conservative Party MP defect from Boris Johnson's party to the opposition Labour Party. And we also saw a number of so-called grandees, prominent 
uh, senior figures in the Tory party, uh, most notably David Davis, have already called for uh, Boris Johnson to resign. Maximilian Hess, uh, thanks very much for being here with us, uh, explaining to us the significance of this scandal, the implications of this report, and the key takeaways of the Sugri investigation that has now been received by UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson, who is expected to deliver a statement in a while from now. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.